Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. No Escape from the Jungle, another adventure of George Valentine. My dear Mr. Valentine, my name is Peter Van Russell. I'm a research chemist for one of the rubber companies with offices in Rangoon. I have devoted my life to my work, which I suppose to someone else would be about as dull as my own person. It has been years since I have even followed the American newspapers, let alone kept abreast of your customs. I have never been in your city before. Now, I say all this so you will understand how impossible it is for me to find, to locate, a certain man without your help. A man who, like myself, has just arrived from Burma. A man who is here, but is not here. It is a debt of honor, you understand. Purely a personal matter. I must see him. I only have a few days before I, I return to the jungle. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Van Rossel. You said this man is here, but he isn't here. No, I assure you, it is just as confusing to me as it is to you, Miss Brooks. Well, to start at the beginning, what's this man's name? Uh, Hollowell. Terence Hollowell. Uh -huh. He's, uh, oh, he's about 40 years old. Tall, quite distinguished. Hollowell, huh? Does he live here? Did you look him up in the phone book? Oh, yes, yes. He maintains a residence. Well, then what... Now, I telephoned, you see, from my hotel, and I was informed by a caretaker that Mr. Hollowell won't be arriving from Burma until tomorrow. Well, okay. Then he just hasn't got here yet. Now, yes, he has. I came by plane. I'm sure he was at least a day or so ahead of me. Here. Now, that's a little torn. Uh, cablegram. Van Russell, Pan Am, Honolulu. Was waiting for me at the airline's office yeah, in Hawaii. Let me Hawaii. see that. Waste of time, you're trying to contact me. Well, right in detail, but assure you that under present circumstances, our meeting one another would be needlessly painful to you. A stroke of fate, that's all. Please understand, Terence Hollowell. Now, here, this, this piece here, you see? That cablegram was sent from this city. He sent from here. So he is in town. Yet... At his house, they insist he is not. He is here, and he isn't. Uh, Mr. Van Rossel, apparently this man doesn't want to see you wherever he is. Uh, what sort of person is this, Hollowell, anyway? Oh, a traveler, a, a lecturer. You know, most charming fellow. He stayed with me for a week or so at my plantation north of Rangoon. No, but so easygoing. Not this sort to be mixed up in anything troublesome, you know? And you have no idea what he's talking about in that cablegram? No. And I think I should find out, don't you? There is a pearl necklace. Ten black pearls in a necklace. What's that? Well, that's the only thing I can think of. Hollowell is a man who admires beauty. I helped him to obtain a necklace, that's all. Oh, it's valuable. He paid nearly every penny he had, nearly $2,500 for it over there. So it's worth a lot more here. Oh, yeah, yeah. But what could be that... Yeah, I understand you, Mr. Van Rossel. What could have happened to a perfectly nice guy that made him disappear and yet not disappear? Yeah, precisely. Only what do I do when and if I find him? What is it you wanted to see him about in the first place? Oh, naturally, Mr. Valentine. I will explain anything you wish when the time comes. But right now, the urgent question seems to be why is Terence Holloway trying to hide? And most important of all, where? <laughs> Nice-looking house and a hammock to loaf in. Pretty good. Uh, George, 
Mr. Van Russell has already tried calling the house here. I, I can't see any reason for that. Always our start with the obvious, Angel. Maybe this Hollowell just doesn't want to be bothered with our Dutch friend. You know, look me up sometime, and then the people take you up on it and you're stuck. But he was his guest in Burma. He wouldn't be rude. Wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Are you from the house here? I mean... It uh... seems so unusual. All those wonderful little birds out at this time of morning. Don't you think? Well... They should be sleeping in the middle of the day. Yes. But it's not hot, is it? There's no reason for them to be sleeping here. <laughs> well, we just wondered if you... Oh, were... my, no, no. I'm not from the house. No, no, indeed. You see? I have my umbrella. Yes, I see. Yes, uh, this is Mr. Hollowell's house, though. I only carry my umbrella from habit, I suppose. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, you haven't rung the bell yet. Yes. Yes, it's Mr. Hollowell's house. It's his. It's not like him, though, do you think? We've never met him. Oh. Oh, you've never heard him talk. You've never heard the beautiful words he uses. With such a sad expression. But so exciting. All the romantic places. The intimate, beautiful thought. What did you say? Oh, no, I haven't rung the bell, no. You may if you wish, but it won't do any good. Why not? She's at home. Perhaps she'll throw you out like she did me. What? His wife. Mrs. Allowell. Yes. His wife. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just waiting. Just waiting. Who hired that maid? I asked you, who hired that maid? Lisa, for heaven's sake, please. Not a day over 18 and straight out of a model agency, if you ask me. You've seen her. How could any man help seeing her? But I tell you, George, I listen. didn't. Yeah, then the maid did said to wait in the hall. But... I won't have her around the house. I did not, Lisa. Now, please, why do you care? It's not your house anymore. You get your separation checks. That's all that's that matters. That's why I'm here. I haven't had a check for two months. You've been holding out again. There isn't any money, I tell You're you. You're lying. Oh, Lisa, darling, I couldn't lie to you if I tried. Don't you believe me? Uh, hello. What Is anybody... Uh... Oh, excuse me. Oh, how do you do? Um, excuse us. I I'm Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Valentine. The maid said of to come... Of course, of course. Visitors all over the place. Why not? I'm Mrs. Hollowell. Oh, but then you must be Mr. Hollowell. My name is Cy Kirby. And you walked in and are offended because I make a lot of noise. All right, I don't mind. I'm a nasty woman. Mr. Kirby is my husband's business partner. He belongs here. I don't. He's the one you want to see. Uh, what club do you represent, Mr. Valentine? Uh, what club? <laughs> Tell me you're a process server. Which one of my husband's rich women friends do uh, you... Lisa, isn't it about a lecture? Really, that's our only business, you know, travel talks. And <laughs> I just assumed you were like the lady out there with the umbrella or the committee of women out in the hall. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, newspaper, that's all. Uh, wanted an interview. We understood Mr. Hollowell had just arrived from Burma. He won't be back until tomorrow. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, tomorrow. Oh, I see. Well, I understood he might have arrived already. No, but I'm sure Mr. Kirby can tell you everything you want to know about my husband. Uh, of course. Every bit of publicity counts. Uh huh. Well, uh, look, I wondered if we could get a picture of Mr. Oh, Hollowell. Well, naturally. Delighted, I suppose. Even Burton Holmes needs a little press cooperation now and then. Uh, come along. We'll find a photograph in his desk. <laughs> George, you'll never locate a man just by carrying his picture around. I will buy a telephone pad, Angel. What? Yeah, it was on his desk. There's the name of an employment agency scribbled on it. It may be just a cockeyed hunch, but come on. Flavin Home Service Employment Agency. No, no, Mr. Flavin, there's nothing wrong. I just phoned you to check, that's all. So Mr. Hollowell did hire the girl himself, huh? I see. And he phoned from the Benson Hotel. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, 
Now, the man in the photograph, why, yes. Oh, yes, he's staying here at the bench. His name is... Uh, Al- could you just tell me what his room number is, please? Mm, 325. Oh, but his key is in. I think he's probably across the street. Uh, what's this all about, Mr. Valentine? You mean that theater over there? No, no, a little jewelry store. I've seen him go in there before. Jewelry? Yeah. George, remember the pearl necklace? Yeah. What's that? Uh, I don't know, friend. It's all too much for me. Uh, suppose we just wait. What's the matter? Give me that photograph. George. That's him, isn't it? Oh. May I have my key, please? 325. Mm-hmm. Uh, these people were just, uh, asking about you, Mr. Smith. Oh, they were? Mr. Smith? Why, yes, young lady. Mind if we step over here a second? Well, no, not at all. But, uh, what do you wish to see me about? It's Hollowell, isn't it? Isn't that your name? <laughs> oh, why, yes. Yeah, but who are you? I, uh, I don't understand. Neither would the clerk over there if you told him. Neither would I. No, I don't think there's any law against a man being incognito, is there? Who sent you? My wife? Her lawyer? <laughs> well, that's the obvious explanation, isn't it? She has a little trouble collecting money from you, I understand. Well, I suppose everyone has money troubles. Never mind, I'm not interested. But, uh, what is it you want? Every minute I want less and less, Buster. Come on, Brooksy, we've done our job. Nice to have met you, Mr. Hollowell. But, Mr. Valentine, I... located I would... him. That's all you hired me for, Mr. Van Russell. Yeah, the Benson Hotel. Now, you've done a very good job. Oh, wait a minute, I... wait a minute. Not so fast, friend. You said you'd do a little explaining yourself. Why he sent a wire brushing you off is another matter, and oh, I want to know... Oh, of course, yes. I said I would tell you. Well, a, a debt of honor, that's all. And I appreciate so much your finding him. I am really not concerned with whatever his little problems are. Well, then? Because I am only here from Burma, you understand... To kill him. Thank you again, Mr. Valentine, for finding him for me. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. To coax thousands of extra miles from your tires, here's a suggestion. Drive your car into any standard station or independent Chevron gas station and let the car savers give you tire service. Here's what they'll do. First, they will check and inflate to correct pressure. This should be done every week, for if your tires are just a few pounds too low, they can wear out twice as fast. Second, the car savers will watch for cuts and bruises, tacks and glass before they cause trouble. Third, they will switch your tires for you. Almost any kind of driving, you know, puts more wear on rear tires than front ones, on right tires more than left. Switching their position will equalize wear, make them run longer. The result? More mileage for your money and safer driving every mile. For expert tire care and for all car saver services, stop in at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean... We take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. The business of Terence Hollowell is travel talks. Only from what his partner says, they're not making much money at it these days. Hollowell has trouble with his wife, too. But most of all, he's likely to have trouble with your client. Because if your name is George Valentine, then you have a harmless-looking client, Mr. Van Rossell, who has just said, thanks for finding Hollowell, because now he can kill him. Hey, wait a minute, you... Van Russell gone, George? Oh, yeah, sure. Hung up and ran. But it'll take him at least 15 minutes to get over here to the hotel. Well, he wouldn't just come and kill him. Why would he tell you? Why would he warn anybody and then do it? Oh, lots of crazy people in the world, Angel. But this is no time to argue about it. Hollowell went upstairs to his room, didn't he? Mm, that's right. Okay, play it safe. Find the house detective. Tell him what it's all about. Oh, as if I knew. Tell him to keep Hollowell there until I meet you. Where are you going? To try and tie this together fast so it does make sense. The jeweler's across the street, Angel. That pearl necklace is the only thing I know about that ties a would-be murderer to his corpse. Uh, Yeah, 
Ah, yeah, beautiful. Such pearls I have never seen. You mean this is it? This one right here? Oh, uh, yeah. Relic from the days when there was time to collect, when beauty was not rhinestone. Uh-huh. Now, look, I ask you... Ah, so even to buy something, you must be in a hurry. All right, all right. $15,000. Uh... There, there, you see. Now you think it is too much. Such a hot day, you, you, you should take your time. You should sit down. No, no, I was just surprised they were for sale. But, but Mr. Hollowell's pearls, you asked about... Now, look, he sold them to you. These are the ones he bought in Burma. I know the man who helped him get them. Oh, yeah, well, well, of course he sold them to me. Now I sell them. But he's been spending a lot of time over here. His hotel clerk said he what, was over... Why, what do you do? Make puzzles for yourself? Two days I spend making another necklace for Mr. Hollowell. That's all. A uh, cheap, bad one. Culture stuff. Uh, 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 junk. Wait a minute. You mean he sold you this one for a nice profit but got you to make an imitation? Uh, every time you turn around, it's got to be a mystery. No, 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 no. No imitation. Just a bad one. That's all. Pearls, yeah. Black ones. But nothing illegal. Nothing to fool anyone. Nothing to fool a jeweler. <laughs> Only to fool a wife, perhaps. Huh? Ah, I know this man from before. Well, what's wrong with that? I I fool my wife. You fool yours, don't you? So, all right, it's a hot day. Yeah, Brooksy. George, he's gone. Mr. Hollowell's gone. You sure? He piled some of his luggage into a cab the minute we left earlier. Oh, brother, everybody disappears. No, George, the starter remembered the address, or at least enough of it. Well, where did Hollowell go? His home. The big travel expert's gone home, that's all. <laughs> such a strange thing to do, such goings on. Lady, this, this, George, you should put in a mystery show. Mr. Valentine, I'm so sorry I was rude this morning. Oh, not at all, Mrs. Hollowell. <laughs> Through here, please. He's unpacking now. The heat, I guess, or waiting for your husband to come home. Or... Oh, I beg your pardon. What? Oh, you said he was home. Of course. It's you. Still waiting. Aren't you patient? I'm all right. Mr. Hollowell is home. Yes, he came in the other way a little while ago. I'm sure he can see you soon. Don't worry. Even nice to the club women now, huh? Oh, and I'm sorry I teased you about your umbrella before. He'll just be a minute. I'm all right. I'm waiting. Yes, why not? They're silly, but they pay to hear his lectures. It's a crazy business, his and size. And look here. He brought me this. Hmm. Pretty necklace. Oh, you already noticed it. But see, it's real black pearl. Nice husband. He bought it with his last penny in Burma. I know it was because Sai keeps the books and he told me. How could I stay angry at a husband like that? Oh, Terrence. Terrence, darling. Yes, my dear? I, uh, I won't keep him long, Mrs. Hollowell. <laughs> and he wants to kill me, you say. Van Russell, <laughs> imagine... Imagine his even being here. Sure. It's very amusing. He's insane. Of course you know that. Lived in the jungle too long. Nothing but work. I think it's very amusing the way your wife fell for the phony necklace, too, Buster. What's that? Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to tell her. She'd start worrying again about that pretty maid you hired. <laughs> <laughs> How much does your partner, Cy Kirby, know about that little profit you made on the necklace? Buying it for 2500 Buying? Well, didn't you? In Burma? The real one? Or is that what Van Rossel is upset about? Something to do with that necklace? Oh, get out of here. You've given me your little warning, and thanks very much. Goodbye. Oh, no, no. My curiosity gets bigger and bigger the more this I talk. This is my house. I've done nothing criminal. I got out of here, I said. I'll get it, George. Hello? Oh, George, it's Lieutenant Johnson. Yeah, I asked him to call us here. Yes, Lieutenant. Yes? Mm-hmm. George, they finally found Von Russell. They picked him up at 5 o'clock. He's been watching that hotel of Hollowell's all afternoon. Oh, give me that phone. 
Hello, Johnson. Let me talk to that guy. No thanks for picking him up. No thanks for anything. All right, all right. Thanks. Would you... Besides, you're not going to talk to him. He just fainted. Besides, he's downtown and I'm not... What? He what? Things got hotter after you left, I guess. I'm out at the Hollowells and boy, do you get things turned around. That Van Russell of yours is the only one who couldn't have murdered him. Murdered? You heard me. Hollowell, the big travel and charm boy, stopped three bullets. I don't know. I barely got here myself, Valentine. Well, his wife was upset. First she was hating him, then she was... Yeah, 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 I got that. But after you left, she drove to the hotel to get some more of his baggage for him. Took the maid with her. They were the ones found the body when they came back. Yeah. Right here in this hammock. That's right. In the hammock. Yeah. <laughs> what a life. Not if you did. We got the place pretty well roped off and fast, but it's big. Lots of space. Cy Kirby. Been this guy's partner for years. Says he was upstairs and didn't hear a thing. We tried it out and you can't hear oh, from wait there. Minute, Johnson, wait a minute, will you? What's the matter? Look, Johnson, I could have stopped it. I could have added up all the little tips and stopped it. Take it easy. The guy was a heel. Big, soft soap artist. Big fake. Romance with a buck. But I could have figured out why a man would tell me he was going to kill in advance. Sure, sure, a debt of honor. Look, I told you Van Rossell wasn't within my... He hired me to find the guy. He showed me a wire. But suppose it wasn't his wire. Yeah, torn, that's right. First part of the name was torn. Beat yourself with something I can recognize, will you? Look, Johnson, every little thing adds up in one direction. So funny the bird should be awake in the middle of the day, she said. Said it wasn't hot on a very hot day. Look, I know, friend. I know I'm crazy, but so's murder. We don't even scratch the edges of it, Johnson. But an umbrella does. Huh? Yeah, look. Suppose she came from Burma. Suppose Van Rossell was chasing after her, too. Trying to protect her in advance. Or trying to get Hollowell protected in advance to stop it. Well, the umbrella over there. Can't you see it? Suppose it belongs to her. Suppose she's not a club woman, Johnson, but Van Rossell's wife. George, there she is. Yeah, I know. She's got a revolver. She's watching us. Stay where you are. All right, lady, sure. Now, don't worry. My name isn't Hollowell. I killed him. Did you know that? I know, I know. But take it easy, please. It's all over. No. No, it was all over a week ago. He told me that when he left them. But I wouldn't believe she was in love with him. Oh, George, the poor thing. I know, just waiting till he got here to shoot him. Oh, leave me alone. Please, leave me alone. You are Mrs. Van Rossell, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I was. I, I mean... I know. Your husband told me about Hollowell visiting you for a week. I followed him. What of it? So I'm a stupid middle-aged fool. I saw the cablegram that missed you in Honolulu. Get away, please. Please get away. I'm sorry, lady. I want that... <laughs> All right, Brooksy, take it easy. She's shooting in the dirt. She doesn't want to hurt us. It's just Hollowell that she... No, but I said get away! Hey, that's three shots, Brooksy. And there's three in Hollowell. That makes six. All right, it's all over now, lady. You've done all your shooting. Get away, I said! Oh, brother, have I been wrong? George, she's pointing it at herself. Hey, look out! <laughs> yeah, sure, lady. Still another shell. All right, now let's see your purse. You've got your purse, haven't you? There it is, George. She dropped it. No shells there. Huh. Guess we did some good after all, Angel. Everybody else had a motive, too. Wonder which one shot him first. What? This revolver only holds six shells. Did Hollowell say anything to you when you found him out there in that hammock? What? Oh, no. No, I've been waiting until I couldn't stand it anymore. And I went out and I found him there. And I did what I came from Burma for. I shot him. Lady, you fired your gun four times just now. There are three bullets in Hollowell. Three and four are seven. So who shot him first? Cy Kirby, Mr. Van Rossell. He was the only one it could have been. You see the others, his wife and the Yeah, maid. I understand, I understand, yeah. Well, they got him fast enough. He didn't have any story cooked up. It wasn't premeditated or oh, anything. Of course, of course. I think they'll be able to prove that your wife only shot a dead body, Mr. Van Rossell. Yeah, I see, yeah. 
Uh, you don't really, do you? I mean, you still haven't told us about your wife and Hollowell uh, and... Kirby, Emma. that was his partner. Yeah, there was what, some difficulty. Well, he'd been holding out on him. Over $10,000 profit on a necklace. And the only reason Hollowell lied about his return to Kirby was to give him time to arrange for its sale without anyone knowing. It's been going on for years, apparently. This time, Kirby caught up with him. Oh, it wasn't really that, though. It was Mrs. Hollowell. No matter how mad she got at her husband for carrying on with other women, no matter how many times they separated, she always went back to him. And Kirby couldn't stand it. He loved it, too. It's always love, one way or another. The same as your coming after your wife, even after she'd left you. I suppose there will be a trial. I suppose my wife... Well, there certainly will be an investigation. Maybe about shooting somebody who's already dead, but... Why won't you talk about your wife? Why won't you tell me what I want to know, that silly business of the necklace that kept confusing us? That was a wedding present. I gave to her years ago. She gave to him. That's all. Nice guy, Hollowell. Yeah. But your wife, I mean, she knows that you came after her trying to help. She knows what you're really like or she wouldn't have tried to kill Hollowell. Don't you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a dull place we live in. And I am not much excitement myself. Not glamorous like United States. No. We work it out somehow. Don't worry so much. Goodbye. <sighs> what was that line of yours, Brooksy? One way or another, it's always love. Go on, darling. There's nothing I'd rather hear you talk about. Look ahead to extra miles of trouble-free engine performance. Look to new RPM motor oil, the oil that doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Friends, it's a fact that motor oil can make a big difference in how long your engine lasts. Recently, atomic research tools have been used to discover what kind of oil formula it takes to cut engine wear and oil consumption way down. Scientists have developed a revolutionary motor oil, new RPM. Listen to what it can do for you. Compared with premium type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, new RPM cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts in the kind of driving most people do. We call it stop-and-go driving, short trips around town, shopping, short commutes, when your engine never really warms up. Here's another point. New RPM doubles protection against gummy carbon, acid, and varnish. No matter what kind of driving you do, your car will be a better car longer with the motor oil that doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. New RPM. Ask for it at standard stations or independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Brooksy was played tonight by Michael Ann Barrett. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Larry Dobkin as Van Rossell, Lorene Tuttle as Mrs. Van Rossell, Bill Boucher as Hollowell, Dara Singleton as Lisa, and John Daner as Cy. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>